George, that is priceless. It's not funny, actually. <laughs> it is from here. Pheasants instead of turkeys. <laughs> they saw you come in. I couldn't believe it when Eddie told me. He weren't supposed to tell you. I bet. Not till I sorted it. Oh, and how are you going to do that? Swap them for pigs? It's all in hand. They're the pinky coloured ones, by the way. Without the wings. <laughs> yes, all right. No, but seriously, George... Grandpa wants his £75 back. I know that. He never lets up about it. Well, I don't blame him. So where is it going to come from? I already paid some off. And Grandpa will get the rest soon. Pheasants are just as marketable as turkeys. Oh, are they? I'm selling them to the shoot. Oh, George, be serious. I've got it planned, Mum. I'm more than halfway there. I was asking Pete about the shoot, and he said the man to talk to is Martin Gibson. Martin Gibson? And Dad's still got his number, so all I have to do is give him a call. People don't just call Martin Gibson. The man's a shark, and you don't want to be dealing with him. I can do this. I can talk. I know how all that goes. This is the stuff you need, not what they trot out at college. Really? Really. I'm telling you, a couple of days max, and those pheasants will be off my hands. Grandpa will get his money back, stop moaning, and I'll come away with a sweet little profit. Oh, I don't know, George. You've got your own mindset on deals these days. It's the way to go. So what happened to the little boy who loved helping out on the farm? The family boy. He grew up. Like bonfire night. We was all there yesterday. Pizzas and sparklers and stuff. And all the family, except George. What happened to George? Forty thousand. Right out of the blue. It doesn't surprise me. He's got a mean spirit, Vince Casey. Trouble is, he's not really thinking, he's just lashing out. You mean, maybe he'll change his mind? No chance. Stick to what he promised. Honestly, can't see him doing that, love, no. He mustn't be allowed to get away with this. Well, according to the agreement, that's exactly what he can do. Well, then we have to challenge him. No. And the agreement, he cannot suddenly demand repayment like this. We're in no position to challenge him. I have to say, I think Pip's right. It'll only make things worse, David. We can't afford to fight him. We can't afford not to. Yeah, but if he's in the right... Well, morally, he's not, is he? No, but legally... And if we give in and pay up, where does the 40,000 come from? Mm. Hmm? I mean, it's hard enough to find in normal times, but after the summer drought, we're still tight on feedstocks. Yeah, and um, we could well end up needing to buy in more. Yeah, costs have shot up. Now, what he's doing is just plain spiteful, and we have to challenge him on it. In law, you mean? If we have to. Fight him every inch of the way. And if that hands him another rod to beat us with? Uh, hi, Ben. Hello. Josh asked me to bring these over. What are they? Sales projections or something. He said Mum wanted to look through them. Oh, right, yeah. I will. Is Gran around? Uh, not at the moment, no. She's out again. Felpersham. Right. Leonard Wister off to the cathedral. You want to stay for a bit of lunch? Oh, thanks. No, not right now. I'm taking Bess for a run. Look, Ben... No, Dad, I don't want to talk. There's nothing to say. I'll see you around. Right, bye. bye. You see, Mum? This is what he's done to him. And it's what Vince wants. First, he blasts him publicly in the bull, and then he twists the knife by calling in the loan. Oh, Ben mustn't know about no, that. No, no, he's got enough on his plate. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to stand by and watch while Vince takes a swing at my son. I want to fight him on this. We have to. Mum? No, you're right. Whatever it takes, we fight. Gibson. Uh, hello. Who is this? Martin. Martin Gibson. Who am I talking to? How'd you get this number? I trust this is not a bad time. It is not a good one. Uh, oh. I'm stop taking my cellar. Who are you? W wine cellar. Fantastic job. If you ever want any recommendations... Yeah, right, that's enough. Whatever you're after, I don't want to know. No, wait. Thank you for your time. It's me. It's George. George? George Grundy. Will's son. We've met. You're Will Grundy's boy? At your service. I remember. Scrap of a kid. Bit cheeky. What do you want, George Grundy? Why are you phoning me in the middle of stock-taking? As a favour to you. Oh? Because I am actually in a position to do you a good turn. H Hello? Are you still there? I'm waiting to hear about it. Oh, 
Right. So go on, enlighten me. Right. Well, a certain commodity has come into my possession, and I happen to know your... What? Commodity? Pheasants. What? Y young pheasants, bred for the shoot, and perfect specimen. How many? Fifteen. Is that all? Uh, fit birds, though. Excellent sport. They're real goers, Mr Gibson, and I happen to be in a position to offer them to you at a particularly choice rate. Oh, yes. For old time's sake. Well, George Grundy, you've got a nerve. I'll give you that. Just trying to spread the happiness, Mr Gibson. Tell you what I'll do. Where are you? Grange Farm. Good. I'm passing through Ambridge this afternoon. I'll drop by. Take a look at this commodity. You will? Uh, that's great. No promises, mind. I'll see you early afternoon. Oh, sweet. No, uh, Rosie's with Toby this afternoon. OK. It's going quite well, these new arrangements. Toby's got himself into a bit of a routine. Well, good. That's good. So, I thought I'd have a catch-up with my little brother. Yeah. Thanks. You sure you don't want anything to eat with you? No, no, coffee's fine. Um, we haven't really talked properly since... Um, since I messed up? No. No, we haven't. No, look, um, I ought to tell you... Um, I mean, uh, I talked to Chelsea a while back and she kind of let me know she was pregnant. I mean... <sighs> She said she was talking about a friend, but it was obvious, really. And uh, I tried to give her advice, but I didn't know you were responsible. Involved, and I, I don't want you to think that I. It doesn't matter, Pip. I'd just be feeling bad about it. What she did was right. It was her decision. Mm. And my fault. She had to make it, but her decision. Uh, no, don't blame yourself. Well, whose fault is it then? I mean, ask them whose fault it is. Ask who? That little table over there. Jean Harvey? And Wendy Brink, yeah. They keep looking this way. They know exactly whose fault it is. Oh, no, Ben. And they're not wrong. They've got no right. They're right to stare. Oh, they're only confronting. But I'm just going to tell them. No, 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 don't. No, no, th who are they to sit there in judgment? Please, Pip, don't. I just want to put the record straight. Well, you won't do that, will you? You'll just make it worse. <laughs> and they'll talk about me even more. We have to do something. You don't. This is up to me. You should talk to someone. <laughs> no. You must have counselling services. No, you? Pip, that won't work or either. Or me, if you like, if you think it might help. No. Thank you, but no. Why does everyone think I have to talk? I got this wrong, and I can't make it right again. Talking's never going to change that. Well, Mr Gibson, there's the birds. Mother. It's up to you. No, Mother, leave this to me. Mr Gibson's going to want background on his purchase. Background? They're pheasants. George is right. I won't buy a pig in a poke. Quite right, nor should you. What I see here is a handful of scrawny birds in a badly lit barn. Oh, they're far more than that, I promise you. These birds have been specially bred. They've had training. Training? Have they? Professional training runs. The thing is, there's high demand for this lot. What with avian flu and everything, there's a shortage of birds, see? You must know this. Oh, I do. I've had plenty of inquiries. Someone's offered me £10 a bird for this lot. I I've told them no. I said, I'm not taking it. There's someone as first refusal. Of course, I didn't say who, and I didn't say how much. But you're saying no? Eight. Eight? Eight? As a favour for a friend. A favour? That's good of you, George Grundy. And in return, I offer you a tip. You do? Shake hands with the man who offered ten. What? I'm not interested. It's prime stock, this is. They're scrawny, undernourished. Uh, they've been pampered, these have. George is right, Mr Gibson. I'm sure he's given them proper care. They're not what you led me to believe they were. No, I promise you, uh, they Yes? I could take them all off your hands for fifty. Fifty? As a favour, because I rate your father. Sixty, the lot. <laughs> I could go to two fifty a bird, I suppose. Two fifty per bird. So that'd be. Hang on a minute. I have to be on my way, George. Uh, all right, done. Right. There's my hand. Before I change my mind. And you'll deliver them. What? You'll deliver them. Uh, I've got your number. 
I'll text you details. Goodbye, George Grundy. Goodbye. You're a shrewd businessman. Uh, goodbye to you, Mrs. Grundy. Goodbye. Oh, George. Fifteen at two fifty. That's thirty-seven and a half quid. Don't feel too bad. And he was offering fifty. He's a shark. I said he was a shark. <sighs> I suppose so. And he's ruthless. I wouldn't have nothing more to do with him. <sighs> Mum, he's great. He what? This is what I want. No, George, you to don't. To be that kind of farmer. He's not a farmer. Big schemes and, and big money behind him. You saw the car. You saw how he just did what he did. Yeah, he's got no time for the likes of us. Of course not. Scratching dirt and getting nowhere. Why would he? George. Give me five years, Mum. I'll be where Martin Gibson is. I promise you. I don't think I realised how hard he's been hit by all this. You can see that. He looks crushed. Yeah. He's hardly sleeping. And he blames himself for everything. Everything? That makes no sense. It does to Ben. He made one mistake, a pretty big one, but... Well, I know, Dad, and now he's counting the consequences. And the way he sees it, they're all down to him. Then we need to sit down with him and talk things through. But he won't do that. Then what can we do? Well, I don't know. Stay by him, I suppose. And make sure he knows we're here. So if he ever does want to talk... Mm. Yeah, and do what we can to keep Vince Casey in check. Well... What? I'm, I'm not so sure. No, Pip, we agreed. We're not going to stand back and let that man walk all over us. But it won't help Ben if we go to war against Vince. What, you mean let him get away with it? Would that matter? Yes, absolutely it would. Well, no, because this isn't about Vince. Pip's right, David. You might well want a hit back at him. <laughs> well, believe me, I do. But if that's going to make things worse for Ben... So, what? We pay him off? For Ben's sake, I, I think we have to. Yeah. Repair the lawn and this ends quickly. Vince no longer has a hold over us. Mm. Oh. <sighs> All right. Yes. Maybe that is best. So, now the question is, where are we going to get the 40,000? I think it's all very sad. Well, it's certainly very confusing. Young lives thrown into turmoil like this. First it's Tracy Horribin who's having a baby, then she's not, but Chelsea is. Well, that's the truth of it, Tony. And Ben, young Ben. So it seems. And some people are so cruel. I know. Quick off the mark to cast the first stone. Mm, cruel or thoughtless. Like our window. Your window? Well, the girl's window, Seren and Nova. Well, how does that fall into the category of cruel and thoughtless? Alan, being so unreasonable. Oh, it's not really the same, though, is it? I mean, Alan has his reasons. What Ben and Chelsea are dealing with is malicious gossip. Well, maybe. Anyway, what can I do for you, Linda? Um... Something you wanted to talk about, you said. Uh, yeah, there was, yes. Well, we've already covered the Bridge Farm soil score, Ben and Chelsea, the, the window. There was something I wanted to ask you, yes. Are we edging any closer? Because I do have one or two things I should be doing. Yes, of course, of course you have. Um, <clears throat> yes, I was, um, well, I was thinking about, well, about Christmas. Already? You know, the giving and the receiving... Christmas presents? Yes, exactly. Presents. What about them? Well, I wanted to ask you about your own particular memories of such things. What for? What for? You're sort of collecting memories, are you? Christmas memories? Yes. Yes, that's, that's exactly it, Tony. Putting together a collection of memories, asking local people, prominent people, about Christmas's past. You know, childhood, how we used to do things in days gone by, the 60s, the 50s. Oh, I can do that. I go back to the 50s. Splendid. Yes, I'm afraid so. And you have memories. Well... Vivid memories. You can summon it all up. Not really, no. No? They all seem to merge into one after a while, don't they? Well, there must be some that stand out. 
Well, I don't know. With two sisters cracking the whip, they tended to set the agenda. No particularly happy times? Well, you should ask them. Or one that stands out because it was, I don't know, disappointing? Well, not that I could... Although... Yes? There is one that comes to mind. Go on. Now that you're asking. Oh, hello. <sighs> this is me. It's Helen. Can I come over to the dairy? Oh, I'd better do that, I think, Linda. Oh, dear. But I'll, I'll give it some thought. You can see yourself out. Hey, you paid Grandpa about that money from the pheasants? He's had an instalment, yeah. How much? A substantial instalment. George, I'll ask him. A 25. 25? You got more than 35 from Martin Gibson. I have to keep some back. Why? Admin costs, reinvestment. George! Are you off out? Uh, I, I told you I'm helping Fallon get a birthday due prepared. It's gone six, Mum. Well, it's the only time she's got. Make sure you get double overtime or something. <laughs> it's not how it works. So what happens about our tea? You get it late, unless you want to help get it ready. Me? Yeah, because actually, George, that really would help. I'm not feeling too great. What's wrong? Oh, just a bit headache, eh? I'll be all right. But if you get the spuds done for me... Eh? Oh, I got college stuff to do. I thought you weren't bothered about college. No, I am. I know you're right, Mum. I really do have to put the hard yards in. <sighs> yeah. No, no, I can do it when I get back. You sure? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's good you got your priorities sorted. Yeah, it's good. You best push on with that. I will. I'll only be a couple of hours. Bye, Mum. Take care. Dredger, game on. I got Fraudster Dudes too, just released and ready to go. Right, nice cup of tea. All well at the dairy? Linda, you scared the living daylights out of me. I thought you'd gone. <laughs> Not yet. I had a couple more questions I wanted to ask. Oh? Yes, about... Christmas, <laughs> of course. I won't take up much of your time if I can just get the ball rolling on this. Oh. Am I the first, then? First on my list, yes. Oh. Ask away, then. Right. <clears throat> what is your most vivid memory of Father Christmas? Father Christmas? Yes. Uh, right, well, um, let me see. Um, uh, Anything, really, that leaps out at you? I went to see him in Felpersham once, you know, Underwoods. Mm -hmm. They set it up so you felt you were journeying there by submarine. Submarine? Oh, not a real one, of course, but, you know, when you're seven or eight. Of course. I can't actually remember the Father Christmas bit, just the journey, mm. sitting in this little hut thing and, and the sound of some kind of engine. Oh, sounds quite magical. It was a bit scary, actually. I was the only one in there. Well, submarine. <clears throat> and moving on. The next question is about gifts. Oh. Can you recall any significant gifts? Uh, things you were especially delighted by? Oh, I don't know. Gifts of a, a, shall we say, a musical nature? Or perhaps, more significantly, things you hoped to get but didn't? Now, I was thinking about this when I was in the dairy. You were? Yes, and there was one year... Again, I must have been about eight, when I was convinced, absolutely convinced, I knew what I'd be getting on Christmas Day. Yes. I remember waking up full of hope and expectation, almost a kind of certainty, you know. Yes, yes, I think I do. Because I'd actually asked Father Christmas for it. Oh, uh, wrote to him? Yes. Brilliant. So... I went straight for the biggest box, because it was bound to be in there, and I ripped off the paper, paper all over the place, <laughs> and there... Yes? No train set. No train set? Yes. I can't tell you how disappointed I was. I can imagine. Well, what was it? A jumper. Oh. In a box. It was the box that made me think it would be a train set. Oh, Tony. And it was home-knitted by Granny or someone. You could tell because it was done in two different shades of green that didn't quite match. They tried to tell me it was supposed to be camouflage, but I'd lost heart by then anyway. And that was your biggest disappointment? Oh, I think so, yes. I, I mean, who puts a jumper in a box? No, no others. 
Well, nothing that springs to mind. Uh, anyway, I feel better about it now. Yes? Having got my own train set. Well, it was John's, but I've taken it on. Ah, a sort of happy ending, then. Yes. You wouldn't like to see it, would you? So, this woman, Maggie, she's proper horse mad. So, I'm doing a show jumping cake. Yeah, <laughs> great. So, you know, like a couple of fences with chocolate poles and things as decoration, you know, that sort of thing. Brilliant. I'll make a start on the sausage rolls. Oh, you're a star, Emma. No, it's easy enough. Uh, how's, how's Chelsea, if I can ask? Oh, don't worry about asking. Everyone else just pitches in. Is she all right? She's doing okay, thanks. All things considered. I feel so sorry for the pair of them. I wouldn't waste too much pity on Ben Archer. That lot take what they can get, never mind anyone else. Yeah, no, Emma, Ben's not like that. So you say. Are you all right? You look a bit peaky. Oh, I'm fine. Chris was telling me he's going with Alice to the rehab centre tomorrow. Did you know? Yeah. She's been asked to give a talk about how she's been doing. Good for her. Honestly, Emma, you were not looking too bright. Oh, I've got a bit of a headache, that's all. Then you really shouldn't be here. No, Fallon, you can't do all this on your own. Just let me plod on, I'll be fine. No, look, Emma, home. Just go and, and get to bed. No, really, Tony, I'd love to stay and see more, but I have to be going. Pity. I promised myself I'd do one more interview tonight. Oh, yes, right. Still... You got a bit of a glimpse of the layout, I suppose. Oh, yes, more than a glimpse. And I did love the little figures on the platforms. Well, they're not the main thing, you know. No, I know. It's but... mostly about the rolling stock. Well, they do have their own little stories. That chap with the briefcase, for example, what's he there for? The 942 stopping train. Oh, yes, I'm sure, but I... Oh, well, never mind. I have to go. I really have to. Yes, your second interview. Exactly. Oh, oh, hello. Late caller. <laughs> Jacob! Come on in. Not a professional visit. I'm only bringing this. What's this? Ah, uh, brochure. Various treatments. Kate asked me to drop it in. She said Pat wanted to see it. Oh, hello, Linda. Jacob. Though, personally, I doubt that she does. Um, I'm not interrupting, am I? No, no, I'm just going. Yes, Linda's looking for someone to interview. Oh, Actually, you know... And I ought to make my way before it gets What about Jacob to... here? Me? You wouldn't mind being interviewed, would you? Oh, no. Jacob must be very busy. Save you trudging round the village. Which interviewed about what? He won't have time. Christmas or, or Christmas's past. Oh, really? Childhood memories, that kind of thing. No, no, I wouldn't want to... Jacob's those. memories might be a bit more vivid than mine. Well, we'll see. No, really. It's no imposition, Linda. I'd be happy to talk to you about Christmas. There you are. Perfect. Yes, lovely. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear your mum's okay. <laughs> it's good of you to come all this way, George. No, no bother. She reckons she'll be back to work tomorrow. Oh, well, tell her not to hurry back before she's ready. I will. And you look after her, George. She's a treasure, your mum. I'll see she's all right. <laughs> right, well, um, I'm sorry to hurry you off, but I've still got tons to do. Yeah, mum was saying... So, if you don't mind... <laughs> I thought you might need some help. Oh. This birthday bash, you're under pressure. Oh, George, that's so thoughtful, but you've got time, have you? You make time, don't you? Well, there's plenty to be done. <laughs> and here I am. But, you, look, you must let me give you something. No, no. Well, just a token, then. A fiver, maybe. Well, if you're sure. Of course, it was pointed out to me on more than one occasion that you can't actually get a tune from a tambourine. Mm. But in my young mind, that's exactly what I was doing. Well, yes, quite. It was the gift I most appreciated. And that really does give me plenty to work with, Jacob. Thank you. I like to think that that little tambourine put me on the path to playing the organ. Oh, I'm sure it did. Now, I really must be getting along. You, you also I... wanted to know about the disappointments of Christmas, I believe. Oh, well, yes, but perhaps another time... The greatest of which is the uh, Brussels sprout. Really? <sighs> Obnoxious weed. I, I was astonished when I first encountered the Brussels sprout. I, I assumed that it was some form of punishment. 
I have almost perfect recall of the occasion that I first put a Brussels sprout in my mouth. It shocked me in a way. Linda, I, I, I can't... Are you okay? Being back here and everything? It's a bit strange, yeah. Just, just the words. Rehab. Treatment. Mm. Seeing that door again. First time I went through that door. You'll be fine. I will. Yes. What are Jennifer and Brian going to be doing with Martha? Have they got plans? Oh, yes. Spoiling her rotten. <laughs> That's their main objective. <laughs> it's going to be a good day, then. For you as well. Well, we'll soon see. Apparently, I will be missing a chat with Tom. And Tom? What about? Oh, what do you think? No idea. Oh, hang on. Yeah. The window. The window. <laughs> exactly. He wants a conversation about it. A conversation? Mm. A conversation is heavier than a chat. Yeah, I think it might be. <laughs> You don't want to run through your talk, do you? Uh, no, thank you. Maybe just the headings? Well, I went through the whole thing in the car on the way down. Twice, if I don't know it by now. Nope, fair enough. Sorry, you're not doing the talk, are you? Uh, I am, yes. You're Alice? Yes. Uh, and this is Chris. Hi. Oh, right. I'm Sally, one of the, the patients here. They asked me to tell you you'll be in the Jasper room. Oh, well, that's good. I know where that is. Luke said sorry not to meet you. He'll be with you as soon as he can. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, as long as you know where to go. Yeah, thanks. It's more nervous than you. You think? Like she's scared of her own shadow. She reminded me of someone. Who? Me. Anyway, more nervous than me. I'm not nervous. You're the nervous one. Me? You can't sit still. Yeah, I can. I can sit perfectly still. Oh, hello. You must be getting lunch ready. Lunch? Yeah, you can smell it coming up the corridor. Oh, yeah. I remember... I remember that smell. Alice, you all right? It just reminds me... coming down for lunch on that first day. Do you want to go outside for a while, get some air? No, no. Don't be nice, Chris, please. The Alice, wait. No, no, I'm all right. I just have to be on my own for a minute. Alice. Oh, I'm sorry, Pip. You go through. It's all right. After you. Ma, you're the customer. Uh, not really. I'm looking for my aunt. What, Elizabeth? I was told you'd be in the orangery. She was, but she ain't now. Wait. She said she had stuff to do for the hump ball. Oh, okay, then. I'll try the office. I, uh, I wasn't expecting to see you here. Well, it's where I work. I know, but after last week... Uh, I'm fine. I'm OK. Well, good. It's good that you're back. Yeah, thanks. No, hang on a minute. I, I, I have to say this. What? I talked to you, Chelsea. I tried to help. Yeah, I do know that. To give you a bit of honest advice as best as I could. And you never said a word to me. <sighs> you knew it was my brother all along and you never said a word. I never said a word to no one. Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I feel betrayed by that. Well, you think we're going to go around talking about it? But to me, Chelsea, to his sister, his own family. So now we've got Vince Casey trying to ruin us because of what's happened. Yeah, I and don't know. all this has hit us out of nowhere. We were completely unprepared. Yes, yeah, same as me. And there was a moment where you could have told me, but you didn't. You didn't do that. No, I didn't. And what if I had? What? What? So we have our chat, and I tell you. Then what? What difference would it make if I told you it was Ben? You just said something different, would you? Alice? It, it's okay, Chris. I'll be out in a minute. I was getting worried. Well, you don't have to be. I had a bit of a panic. I just splashed water on my face. I'll be all right. You don't look all right. Oh, well, thanks. No, I mean... Thanks for that. You were upset. You shouldn't even be in here. Luke, the counsellor guy, came along. He, well, what he wanted... did you tell him? I said you were in the toilets, that you knew where the room for the talk was, and you'd see him in there. Right. How long have I got? Uh, half an hour. A bit more. Are you going to manage this, Alice? I don't know. I don't think I can manage, no. Shall I find Luke for you? Look, I, I thought I could control it. The old feelings, they were there, but kind of at a distance and in corners. And I smelt the carrots and everything started to close in. No, listen, you can beat this. No, I can't. I, 
I feel like I'm being dragged back to how I was. It's all right. It will be I all right. I can't talk to anyone while I'm like this. I'll just make things worse for them. Of course you won't. Please, Chris, I'm scared. I don't want to be here. Hello. Alice? Oh, sorry. I was miles away. I don't mean to... Do you mind if I sit? Uh, no, no, go ahead. I'm just waiting for Chris. Can I ask you something? He's gone to get the car. I, I really I'm don't want to... I w uh, <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. No, yeah, it's all right. Go on. Uh, I don't mean to bother you here if you're getting ready. You wanted to ask me something? It's not really a question, it, it's a favour. Oh. We're supposed to write something about ourselves, a, a sort of life story about what it was like for us before we came here. Yeah, I remember doing that. It was hard. Well, I tried to do that. I kept making a start, but it never really came to anything. I couldn't do it. That sounds familiar. See, I lost touch with my parents and I didn't really have any friends. My life had become so small. There's not much to say. What? No one? Well, one. There was one friend who was always there, who never criticised, who never hit back at me. Oh, I see. Who stopped me feeling so alone. You mean... Yeah. But that does hit back in the end, Sally. Alcohol's not a friend. It's just another way of hiding. Maybe. Anyway, I made myself write something and this is it. Here. Uh, and, and you'll read this to the rest of the group? But I can't. Why not? Because I daren't. Daren't? I'm ashamed of it. Oh, Sally. It's so pathetic, just someone drinking in a room on their own. No, it's not pathetic. I did it. So, uh, what are you asking me? Will you read it? It's not very long, a couple of pages. I just want to know if it's... That if I decide to read it to the others, it, it would be all right. Or not. Uh, why me, though? You don't know me, we've never met. I met you earlier. Well, yeah, for about a minute. And I felt I could trust you. Well, you can't possibly know you can trust me. I'll risk it. Because you've got through all of this. N no. And that's the sort of person I want to be. No, honestly, you don't want to be like me. <laughs> I I'm sorry, your friend's coming back and I'm holding you up. Alice? No, no don't go. Maybe I'll see you later. No, wait. What's, what's that Sally? Yeah. She's just left her diary with me. She wants me to read it. What now? Yeah, I think so. Well, the car's outside. She trusted me with it, so... I think I ought to read it. And maybe... What? Well, she wants to hear what I've got to say. I'm sorry, Chris. You mean, do the talk? Sally's expecting me to. So, uh, can we stay? Excuse me, I have to wipe this table. Oh, sorry. They all have to be um, wiped after you. Yeah, yeah, of course. You shouldn't really be on there. No, um... Look... Chelsea, I am sorry. I mean, for what I said earlier. Oh, that. I was a bit stressed. I didn't think. No, we didn't much. D can you sit down a moment? I'm not allowed. Please, just for a moment. You can blame me if anyone complains. Mm. I might do that. Thank you. Anyway, don't beat yourself up about it. I get a lot worse than that from other people. Like who? <laughs> Feels like everyone right now. Mouthing off all over the place. Half of them I don't even know who they are. Well, I should not have been part of that. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, you were though. I thought about what you said. About would I change my advice if I'd known it was Ben involved? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't think I would. No? Well, fair enough. Um, it was wrong to blame you for what Vince is doing to us. And what is that? Oh, it doesn't matter. I shouldn't have said anyway. It's absolutely not your fault. Well, he's having a go at you, though. Well, basically, he's making life as hard for us as he can. What, to get back at Ben? Yep. Well, he can be a bit of a toe rag, that bloke. Oh, he can. Well, so I hear, anyway. 
Is that why you were looking for Elizabeth? Sort of. To talk about Vince Casey? Maybe. You found her okay, did you? Yeah, yeah, I found her. <laughs> Mina, don't ask no more questions. No, sorry, I should have kept quiet about Vince. Tell me how you are, Chelsea. I mean, really. Mm, you know, getting back to normal. You move on, don't you? You're still going into college? Of course. Good. How's Ben? Missing Beth? Well, giving himself a bad time. Mm, he is a bit. He does that, I've noticed. He'll come out the other side, though. Tell him. He'll do all right. I will tell him, yeah. I reckon you'll do all right too, Chelsea. <laughs> Me? You. You seem, I don't know, so mature. Yeah. Like cheese. <laughs> anyway, we'll find out, won't we? You were holding my diary? Yes. All the time you were talking, you were holding my diary? It was your diary that helped me through. Helped you? How? I very nearly didn't do the talk. I was right on the edge of running away, wasn't I, Chris? She was. I had the car all ready. Why? All the old feelings were coming back. Like shadow creatures waiting to trip me up. But you stayed. I read what you wrote about how you were feeling, and it was my story too. My feelings. So yes, I stayed. I wouldn't have known, Alice. You were so inspiring. You did what you planned, did you? All the stuff you'd practised in the car? Uh, no. No? I just talked. From the heart, completely from the heart, and holding my diary. I wanted you to know I had it. Now you have to take it back, and you have to read it to your group the next chance you get. I will. I promise you they'll understand exactly what you're talking about. Because I did, I, I do understand, Sally. Thank you. Bye, Alice. Bye, Sally. And take care. I'll do my best. Will she be all right? Uh, I don't know. I hope so. You did it, Alice. <laughs> yes. Those feelings, you dealt with them in a really positive way. Can we go home now? You don't mind being seen out with your aunt, I hope? Of course not. I thought it'd be easier to catch up with you in Felbersham. Probably is. You know, on a uni day. It's still going all right, is it? Of course. Mm. It's fine, yeah. Has Dad asked you to do this? What? No. Because I know he's keen for me to talk. No. Even ben. though there's really nothing to talk about. I haven't spoken to your dad. This is my idea. I wanted to buy my nephew a coffee and see how he is. I'm all right. I did happen to run into Pip yesterday, but honestly, Ben, there's no conspiracy. You don't blame me for being concerned, do you? No. Sorry. Pip was telling me about this thing with Vince. Oh, well. He's completely in the wrong. It's not your fault. And I've told him so. Don't worry about it. It's, he's upset about Beth. That's what it is. It's not as personal. No, 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 really, Elizabeth, I don't blame Vince. I've done stupid things. I've hurt people. Someone has to be angry about that. No, he can flare up. After a while, he very often comes to regret it, and I hope he will over this. Well, like I say, I don't blame him. I suppose he thinks he can get at you through Brookfield, but... Brookfield? Please don't think it's a done deal. He can change his mind. About Brookfield? Yes. He does feel things deeply, though. And what he's done, that's aimed at me? Well, at the moment, yes. I'm pretty sure he doesn't care about the money. I suppose not. I will talk to him, though. And if you do... Brookfield may be able to keep the loan. For the solar panels? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ben. You didn't know. Did you tell Brian and Jennifer how great you were yesterday? <laughs> I said it went well. I bet they were pleased. I bet they were really proud. Oh, I didn't tell them about my little wobble. You didn't have to. I was too scared to go in. Because you did go in, in the end. Oh, thanks for coming with me. All I did was drive you there. Not just that. I, I mean, being there, it really helped. Well, you know, 
Actually, I need to ask Brian a favour. Oh, well, good luck with that. I can't get a sensible word out of either mum or dad at the moment. Why is that? Well, they can't talk about anything but dad's health kick. What he eats, what he doesn't eat. Good exercise, bad exercise. <laughs> doesn't sound very Brian. Mum's mm, keeping him on track after the angina attack. Someone told her she should join in too, so she does. Good for her. I, I'm pleased, actually. It's good they're being sensible together. Uh, what did you want dad for? Oh, well, I had a call from this couple in Penny Hassett. They want to look round the cottage. The one you'll get in the settlement? Yes, they're hoping to rent. They've got a nerve. Doesn't go through till next month. Yeah, they were a bit quick off the mark. Well, tell them to wait. It's a bit late for that. Oh, Chris. They sounded really nice on the phone. You said yes. I said they could look round, and then I remembered it's not mine to offer. Not yet. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. Well, I should have asked Brian first. He won't mind. In fact, I can get the keys. When is it? Sort of today, half five. Oh, Chris! Mm. They've really got you round their little finger. It's not like that. They were this really nice couple. You'd have said yes. I'd have told them to sling their hook. You would not. The pair of them, however sweet they are. Anyway, I said I'd see them there. Maybe I should be there too, to make sure they don't take advantage. Oh, well, if you really don't mind. You, you'll need me there to stop them fleecing you. No, Alice, that's not going to happen. No, because I'll be watching them like a hawk. <laughs> you have such a lot to learn about this, Chris. Right, this is the situation. We need to raise 40,000. And quickly, to stop Vince Kearsey in his tracks. Right. Well, I've been looking into it, and we have a couple of options. We could take out a loan. Another loan? No, hear me out. There are companies that specialise in financing solar energy. We could it's try still one a loan, the... though, David. And we've got a stack of those already. Yeah, I know, but it gives uh, us... We're free... still paying for the winter housing unit. And for the refurbishing of the Milton Parlour. All right, all right, point taken. Not alone. You said a couple of options. Yes. Well, we could also sell off the solar panels. I found this investment company that would buy them off us. I did a bit of digging on that score too. Oh, and? Well, our panels are on outhouses, so they'd have to send someone to inspect... Then there'd probably be a survey and all the paperwork that goes with that. Which would take some time, obviously. And time is what we haven't got. Yeah, but it can be done, Ruth. So what do we do? Ask Vince for time to pay? What do you think he's going to say to that? Well, I can guess, but we have to do something. Yes, of course we do. Even an imperfect something. Not this imperfect. Oh, then what do you suggest? Because just stamping on other people's ideas isn't helping very much. What are you shouting about? Well... We're not shouting. Not really. I just heard you. Well, you know what it's like, Ben. No one way of doing things. Like, um, like saving on energy bills in the dairy. Mm. Mm. And that's what it was? Energy bills? It was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not solar panels? Solar panels. And how to pay for them? <sighs> you know. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't need to know. Vince has called in the loan. Yeah. 40,000. And he's done it because of me, so I needed to know. But we can sort it. This is my fault. Honestly, Ben, you don't have to worry about this. Dad, it's my fault. No, the debt is ours. But he's pulled out because of me. He should at least talk to me about it. You've got enough to think about without this. Let us work this out. We were going to let you know as soon as we came up with something. And how's that going, Dad? Because it sounds to me like you've got no answers. Bye, then. Give me a call if you want to go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said they were sweet. They were on the phone. And when they first arrived... That's when they got to the kitchen, it started to go wrong. Where should we put the spice rack, darling? I know. Who knew it mattered so much? <laughs> he had very strong views. <sighs> so did she. Oh, she certainly told him where she thought it should go. <laughs> <laughs> and Martha slept through the lot. Imagine it, though. Stop with those two as tenants. <sighs> oh, Hello. Can this possibly be... We love the cottage and we want to take it. Hi there. Tell them no. Hello, Chris. Is this a good time? Oh, it's a lot better than five minutes ago, Jacob. Jacob? I've been hearing about this house you're renting out. Word does get round. Unfortunately so, in this case. I'm calling to declare an interest. Don't commit to anything. Well, you know it's not on the market yet, Jacob. Yes, but I can be in the queue as soon as it is. And I'd be an absolutely reliable tenant. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, well, can I see it? Um, well... I need to see it first. I'm at the cottage right now, as a matter of fact. Can you get over here as soon as? Easily. 
Stay where you are, Chris. I'll be with you pronto. See you, Jacob. Well. Be careful, Chris. Be very careful. He's right, though. He would be reliable. He's also very particular. You know that. I do, and me and him get on. Well, don't let him push you around, though. I can handle Jacob. If you don't watch out, he'll hijack the meeting. It's your agenda, Chris. You stick to it. I haven't helped, have I? By telling Ben, you mean? I just assumed he knew. Well, no one told you he didn't. I feel terrible just coming out with it like that. You're not to blame, Elizabeth. This is not a row with you. No. However... It is with Vince. Not of our choosing, though. Well, he knows what I think. He's behaving like a spoiled brat. And what does he say to that? Nothing. At the moment. You can't get through to him in this mood. It seems so spiteful. This isn't what he's really like. Well, at the moment, it's all we've got to go on. He will calm down, I'm sure. We can't wait for that. And you can't guarantee he'll change his mind, can you? Hi, Ben. Auntie Elizabeth, are you part of this? Part of what? I'm just here to apologise. We're on your side, Ben. Apologise for telling the truth. I should have been told anyway. Um, are Josh and Pip around? No, they're working. Well, you can tell them later. Tell them what? I'm guessing they know about the loan. They know. Just me who didn't then. What are we supposed to tell them? You can all stop trying to find ways out of this. Because? Because I told you. This is for me to sort out. And I have. How? How have you sorted it, Ben? I've been speaking to my personal tutor. No. What about? Giving up the course. No, oh. Ben, you can't. It's the only what? thing I can do. Think what you'd be throwing away. <sighs> Too late for that. That course means everything to you. No, this is crazy. If I'm working full time, most of what I can earn can go to paying off the loan. Look, let me talk to Vince again. <laughs> no, wait, Elizabeth, this isn't going to work. I'll make it work. We're looking for £40,000. How long is that going to take? As long as it needs to. Vince is not going to let you do that. Well, maybe he'll just have to. Because this is better than nothing. Hardly. And nothing is exactly what you've got. I got this wrong. I have to put it right. Ben! Oh. We can't let him do this. He'd be throwing away his life. I mean, how long would it take to pay off the debt? Yes! He won't, he won't do it. He has to see sense. I don't think he can see sense at the moment. And I worry that he might do it anyway. Well, if he knows it won't work... You mean to punish himself? Yes. Well, then we have to take that option away from him. We have to pay off the loan. And fast. Well, that's the property, Jacob. I don't know what you think. Perfectly acceptable. You're interested? Still interested, yes. Uh, well, obviously we've got a bit of time before it becomes available. Obviously. But it's probably not a bad idea to mention a few ground rules. Indeed. Just so we're absolutely clear about... Well, about what's what. These things will be in a contract, I assume. Well, yeah, I should think so. Yeah, most of them. It's just that I'd have certain expectations as a landlord. For instance? For instance, noise levels beyond certain hours. Will be kept down, of course. And uh, I wouldn't expect a tenant to make any structural changes. Quite. Yes. Unless necessary. You what? Well, I take it you'd carry out necessary structural changes for reasons of safety. Oh, well, yeah. If the building became unstable. I should think so. Or replacements were needed to windows, doors and so on. Replacements, yep. As defined by me, these would definitely be your responsibility. Uh, and there is decoration. No changes to decoration without agreement. Agreement on what is acceptable decorative order and how frequently it should require redoing. Well... The responsibility of the landlord. Probably. Yes, that's probably right. I I'll, I'll look into it. And you'd agree a clause on rent stability? Uh, no unreasonable hikes? I try to be reasonable, yeah. We should also agree before signature on what constitutes reasonable. Yes. Good. Good. Then you may be pleased to know I find the landlord as I find the property. You are Perfectly acceptable. Oh. You may consider yourself landlord in waiting. Oh, right. Well, I suppose so. Good. Uh, I suppose that means you have first refusal. Yes. As I say. Perfectly acceptable. How's it going, Chelsea? Nearly there. Oh, yeah, I've got to get to work. Main problem's finding enough hair to cut. Hey, hey, hey. There's enough to 
Tidy up, I hope. <laughs> she can always stick bits back on, Uncle Neil. Thank you. Haven't you got somewhere else to be? Not for an hour or two. <laughs> Pity. He likes to see the experts at work, don't you, Brad? I do, as it happens. <laughs> yeah, right. No, seriously. Nifty scissors. Thanks. Shame the chat's not up to much. What chat? Was well, she supposed to do conversation as she cuts your hair? Only she ain't very interested. What, and you are, I suppose. Toy spacemen or sums, that's about your limit. I don't do haircuts, so I don't have to chat. <laughs> Lucky for us. Uh, right, there you go then. Hmm? All tidied up. Oh. Oh, well, thank you, Chelsea. All three of them. Yeah. Watch it, young lady, or you'll get no tip. Oh, no, 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 there's no charge, Uncle Neil. Yeah, of course there is. You've done a proper job of work. You should be paid. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 really. No, take it. Go on. Well, leave it on the table. Thanks. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> right. I've got to get off. I'll see you, Chelsea. Bye-bye, Brad. See ya. Bye. You can clear off, too. Show's over. I know. Uh, I just thought... What? Mm. You could do mine. Right. I'll just fetch Jazz's shares. No. Hair out your eyes, then a run through the sheep dip. No, Charles. Uh, not the usual quick trim. Uh, a proper haircut. What? You do what you think's best. What? You mean... Something smart. Oh, my days, Brad, what is this? I want to look smart, that's all. Oh, Princess Leia's coming to Ambridge, is that it? If you don't want to do it, just what, say... What, some other girl? Must be a girl, am I right? No. I'm right, aren't I? It's a girl. No, it's for the Hunt Bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure it is. It is. I'm working there next week, I've got to look smart. Whatever you say, Brad. So, what's it to be? Skin fade undercut? N no, oh, I don't know. Pompadour? I, I don't even know what those things are. If you're just going to take the juice... No, Brad, honest. I'll do it proper, I swear. Yeah? Mm. OK. Time was, he had to take the horses to the forge. Now, I take the forge round with me. I know the shoe's going hot. Yeah, they do, but it's not painful. It's a bit like your fingernails, so no sensation. I didn't know you were interested. It's impressive, Uncle Chris. I mean, really. In fact, I was uh, wondering... What? Well, I got a couple of favours to ask you, kind of related to this. Go on, then. First off, can I help at all? Help? Do stuff around the forge, or help with the horses. Holding them, maybe. I like horses. Well, I can't let you loose at the sharp end, George, but you could spend a day on the forge with me if you like. <laughs> great. Yeah, I can show you the kind of stuff I have to do. Yeah, yeah great. And, uh... What? That would be a... what sort of rate... Right. Just so we know where we stand at the outset. You mean payment? I do. Well, you'd be observing. Right. So that's what? Observer's rates? Observing is watching. So, uh... It's unpaid. Oh. That's pretty much the same all over. You don't get paid for watching someone else work. <laughs> no. No, of course not. Uh, well, what was the other thing? The other thing? Oh, yes. You're renting out this cottage. Uh, yeah. I was hearing about it in the bull. You're looking for tenants. Well, you know someone who wants somewhere, do you? I do, as it goes, yes. Who's that? Me. <laughs> you? Yeah. Uh, it's already promised to someone, George. Oh. Jakob Hawkinson. I'm sorry, mate. It's not going too well for you this morning, is it? <sighs> Don't look so worried. I can't help it. I don't know what you're doing. Honestly, Brad, I know what I'm up to here. You're in safe hands. Yeah, well... Mm -mm -mm. Oh, oops. What? Oh, that should never have come off. What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brad, your face. Oh, what are you doing, Charles? <laughs> Calm down, I was joking. I want to see. No, no looking till after it's finished. Oh, what have you done, though? <clears throat> Where's the mirror? I moved all the mirrors. Oh, Chelsea. Oh, don't worry. You're looking all right these days. Better than your normal layabout scruff. A bit like Dad. Dad? Yeah, you know that photo of us all at the seaside, sitting on that wall? He looks like a ferret in a wig. Oh, no, he doesn't. You just look a bit like him, that's all. Only better looking. Oh, yeah? Uh, especially now I'm doing your hair. <clears throat> you know, I went to see him. What? Dad. 
I went to see him a while ago. A while ago? When? When you went missing. I went with Oliver. We thought you might have gone there. Well, I was never going to go there. What to that loser? Well, I didn't know that, did I? We was trying everywhere we could think of. Mm. How'd it go? It was okay to start with. I thought he was pleased to see me, but he, he weren't. <laughs> he was only being friendly because of Oliver. He tried to wangle money out of him. That's all it was. And did it work? No. He said he needed a couple hundred to fix his car, but mm. Oliver weren't having it. After that, he couldn't wait to see the back of us. Just don't think about it, Brad. He's a waster, always was. Yeah. Only ever thinks about himself. But I look like him. It's not the same. Do I take after him? What? No. Because I know I'm different. What do you mean, different? Not like you and Mum. You two, you're quick on your toes and you're funny and you can talk to people. They like you. But me, I can't do that. I kind of don't belong. Jakob has first refusal. I promised him. Yes, and then something else came up. No, George, it didn't. I, I tell you what you're missing here, Uncle Chris. You're missing family. Family comes first. That's the rule. This blown cake family, <laughs> he's not even from Ambridge. No, George. But Uncle Chris. No. Even if I did break my word, which I'm not going to do, you're skint. You said so yourself. How are you going to pay rent on a cottage when you've got nothing coming in? By syndicate. What? By a company. Y it won't just be me. I'll have a group of mates. Your mates? I've got a fair few who jump at the chance. <laughs> so let my cottage to a bunch of 17-year-old lads. Can you hear yourself, George? What's wrong with it? It's never going to happen. All Not right. a snowball's chance. All right. I get the picture. We didn't seriously think I was going to say yes to that. Well, I had hopes, to be honest. Well, I'm sorry. I just want to make my way. You know what I mean? I, I got something to offer. I want to offer it. But I can't do that at home. I get stifled there. What are you doing? What are you thinking? They don't get it. So you want to move out? I have to move out. Weren't you ever like that? Yeah, everyone's a bit like that one time or another. It's like I can see it. This one clear path ahead of me and it's not heading to Grange Farm. It's going somewhere bigger than that. And it's out there. All I have to do is take the first step. Yeah. I do know that. You did it. You made your way. Well, we'll have to see what we can do about it, won't we? No, Brad, listen to me. You are different. I'm not going to say you're not. But why are you? Because I'm weird. Because you're clever. George says I'm weird. George is talking out the other end. You don't know nothing. You said so the other day. And you should take notice of him because... Well... He does know stuff. He knows squit. He knows the way the world goes. No, Brad. You've got brains. That's why you're different. You've got brains and you're a horrorbin. And that is a winning combination. I still can't talk to people. You don't want to worry about that. Talking to people's a doddle. Then why can't I do it? Because you think too much. What? You work out what you're going to say before you say it. You have to do that, Chelsea. Not always. Don't always think about it. Just open your mouth and see what comes out. That's what I do. Yeah? And how does that work for you? Never let me down so far? Of course not. Not once. Well, maybe it has now and then, but... Hey, here I am. I have survived. So... You're saying just be spontaneous. What have you got to lose? Control. Ah, don't worry about that. What are you thinking? Now? Yeah, right now. What's in your head? What does my hair look like? Oh, OK, fair enough. Let's find out. Are you ready for the mirror? No. Too bad. Here it comes. Ready or not? ta -da! Oh. Uh. Actually, that's not as bad as I thought. It's fantastic, Brad. A complete makeover in one haircut. Hmm. Not bad at all. The pig unit? Barrow, yeah. We've come to the pig unit. I fixed it with Dad. 
I knew a couple of hours ago, but I didn't say. I thought I'd keep it as a surprise. And it is. You're right. Well, what you said about making your way and taking a first step. I thought you were so right about that, and well, I wanted to do something to help. And you thought of Grandad? And Barrow, yeah. Uh, we probably can't go right in because of biosecurity and stuff. A shame. But Dad said he'd meet us out here, see what can be done. George, Christopher. Hi, Dad. Hi, Grandad. Ah, well, this is a turn-up, this is. <laughs> How's things? Oh, fine, fine. Though I better say from the start, we can't go round the unit today. Uh, no, we wondered about that. Uh, we've got to be so careful these days. Never mind. Anyway, you want to tell me what you want from Barrow exactly? Basically a bit of work experience, isn't it, George? Sort of. He wants to make his way in farming, so a kind of first step on the ladder. Oh, good for you, George. And something a bit different from what he gets at Grange Farm. A bit more challenging. Well, I think that's wonderful. Just a uh, look round would do. Oh, I'm sure we can manage more than that. Find a few jobs for you to get stuck into, eh? Uh, he knows it's not for pay. I do, yeah. Oh, it's the experience you're after, eh? It is, but... If it's difficult, Grandad, don't worry about it. I don't want you putting yourself out. Oh, you don't mind, do you, Dad? No, of course not. Uh, it's a lovely thought, as a matter of fact, to have someone from the family working alongside me and the pigs. Although, I should warn you... What? It's not really my decision. It's not? No. We've got to persuade Martin Gibson it's a good idea. Oh, dear. What's up? No... It's just that I recently concluded a bit of business with Martin Gibson. Oh, oh did you? <laughs> Got the better of him over this deal we were doing. <clears throat> he might not like the idea of me working in a Gibson-run business. What sort of deal? Probably best not to say. But I don't want Grandad stirring up bother for himself. Oh, I'll take that risk. <laughs> we'll have a go, George, see what can be done. You just leave it to your Grandad. No, I'm telling you, Jim, I have lost patience with the whole thing. I feel as if I've been interrogating Tony all week. Well, just to find out what he got for Christmas years ago. Or didn't get. But I've learnt nothing. Oh, dear. Yeah, all the subtlety and subterfuge I've brought to bear. No clues? Not a nibble. Why didn't you just ask him straight out? No. It would have been a lot simpler. No, the whole point was to disguise the fact that I was asking about a guitar to stop him becoming suspicious. Well, he must have said something. Oh, he did. He said a lot about every one of his tiny trains in excruciating, painstaking detail. And then there was the never-ending saga of Jacob's first encounter with a Brussels sprout. And where does Jacob come in? Tony brought Jacob in. He thought I was interested in the Christmas memories of all and sundry. Ah, for your Christmas chronicle. Oh, I thought he was inspired at the time. Yes, I've heard about those. Jim, they don't exist. All I want now is to forget about them entirely. Just let the whole idea go quiet and dwindle away. Never to be heard of again. Look, there is Tony. Where? Just come in. Don't look, Jim. Don't catch his eye. Jim? Linda? Fancy you being here. Hello, Tony. What a stroke of luck. I was coming round to see you later. Were you? I've been feeling bad about your Christmas chronicles. Oh, there's no need. No, I think there is. You come up with this wonderful idea and you have the good grace to ask me and I can't remember a blinking thing that's any use to you. Well, there was the train set. Oh, but that was a sad memory, that was. The year I didn't get a train set. Linda was just saying how interesting she found it. Well, it is interesting, but you want something more joyful. So I kept thinking, come on, Tony, you can do better than this. No, really, there's no need. I sort of owe it to you. You don't. I've got plenty of material now. But I've thought of a few more Christmassy things since, you know. How kind. Don't you think, Linda? I've found some memorabilia, too. Memorabilia? Oh, well... Well, that's good of you, Tony, but I don't need... As a matter of fact, I've got the box in the car. <laughs> Stay where you are. I'll go and fetch it. You're a lucky lad, George. Mr Gibson jumped at the chance to have you on board. Well, like I said, me and Martin, we are acquainted. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did stress it's unpaid, though. Officially? Officially? Well... You have petty cash or something, don't you? <laughs> Why? For 
unofficial handouts <laughs> if all goes well. Oh, George, Martin Gibson keeps very tight books. Nothing gets past him. Uh, of course, absolutely fair enough. Yeah. Unpaid is unpaid. Oh, I suppose you could take it up with Martin. Well, yeah, maybe. He happens to be in today. You want me to ask him to see you? No, you're all right. We'll just crack on, shall we? Uh, well, we can't just crack on, George. There's a few formalities to go through first. A few questions I've got to ask. Go on, then. Any diarrhoea or sickness? No, I don't think so. Oh, oh, just a minute. Got to dash. Oh. <laughs> it's not funny, George. There's ASF in Europe. That's African swine fever. If it gets in here, it'll devastate our herds. Right. So before we go round, you will put on clean overalls. You go nowhere on the unit without wearing barrow boots. You sanitise your hands. All right? Right. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry to crack the whip and everything, but it is important. I can see that. Yeah, abide by the rules and you'll have a great time. It's very rewarding working with pigs, as you know. They're personable creatures. I promise you, you'll get to like them. Don't ask him about his course, David. What? I thought that was the point of phoning. No, the point is to find hi, out how Herb. he is. Ben, hi, hi, how's it going? Same as it was before. Which is? I'm fine. You don't need to check up on me. It's not what I'm doing. Isn't it? Well, we want to know you're OK. Of course we do. Ask if he wants to come to tea. Your mum says... Yeah, I heard, thanks, but not tonight, if that's OK. No, no, it's fine. Um... I don't suppose you've given any more thought to... No, Dad, I haven't. You haven't suddenly found a spare £40,000, have you? We're still working on that. Well, then we are as we were. Bye, Dad. Bye. David, we said don't bring up the subject of dropping out of uni. I didn't. You were about to. You... He hasn't done anything about it yet. He's one phone call away from pulling the plug. Unless we come up with something better. Which so far we haven't. Well, I suppose we could give over one of the fields to more solar. We're always getting emails about that sort of thing. Yeah, but it's got the same problems as all the other schemes. It's complicated, and it takes time. Is there an alternative, though? Well... What? You're not going to like it. Tell me. I've been thinking. We could sell some land... I know, I know what you're going to say. Yes. No one likes to let go of land, but at least it's straightforward. Yes. I've been thinking about it too. You have? I didn't say because I thought you'd be horrified. I don't like it, no. But with the right bit of land, we could write off the whole loan in one go. Well, we're still standing, Neil. That's something to be grateful for. Uh, it's been a tough year, though. Huh? Yeah, for everyone. If I hadn't pushed those cutbacks through, would have likely gone under. Well, maybe. Very yeah. likely. There's been a 17% reduction in the national herd. Mm. 17%. Yeah. And that puts the price of pork up. I reckon we need to put more into promoting it. We do. A, an alternative to the traditional Christmas dinner. Yeah. That fee delivery's turned up. Aha. Uh -huh. Our latest recruit. You said to let you know. Right. Well, I'd better go and see to it. Uh, unless there was something else, Martin. Well, no, you go, Neil. I'll see how young George is getting on. I'm doing OK, thanks. Uh, he'll do, will he? Yeah, he's a good lad, George. Good sense of duty and responsible. He'll fit in well. Mm, well a glowing endorsement. <laughs> right, I'll see you outside the office then, George. Is he right? What? Dutiful and responsible. Not what I'd have said. Oh? I'm... Well, I'm after more than that. Like what? I want to be in farming, yeah, but not scraping a living. Uh -huh. I want to be rich. Well, dutiful's not getting me that. Not like your grandfather, then. Grandad's all right, but he's never going to make a killing over some deal, is he? <laughs> Can't see Neil doing that, no. Can I ask you a favour? Uh, you can ask. That deal over the pheasants. How could I have done that better? <laughs> oh, look at these! Tiny bells! <laughs> <laughs> hey, dear. 
I was ah. thrilled when I got these, jingling away all Christmas morning, drove the others up the wall. I can imagine. There's tons of stuff in here. Absolutely fascinating. It is. Of course it is. But I can't All use... these Radio Times covers. The legendary Christmas Radio the Times. Papers, hats and puzzles and the bits of old board games. And they have such a Proustian effect. I beg your pardon? Mm -hmm. They trigger such memories. Oh, yes. Well, I don't suppose they trigger memories of a guitar, do they? Jim... A guitar? Hmm. Uh, not sure. Hmm, no. No recollection at all. Oh, but what have we here? An old envelope full of cracker jokes. Oh, how awful. You want to hear some? Yes, no. please. No, stop. You must stop this. Linda? I'm sorry, Tony, I can't let you go on. Why, what's the matter? There will be no Christmas Chronicles. No? I'm not doing it. Well, why not? Because it's a silly idea made up on the spur of the moment. But... I should never have mentioned it's it. It's a lovely idea. I think so, too. And words going round the village. People like it. They've started collecting their memories. Well, they'll just have to stop. I've typed up three pages of my submarine recollections. You were in submarines? Just the one. No. I promise you, there will be no Christmas Chronicles. Well, that's a shame. The best thing you can do now, Tony, is to take your box away and spread the word. It's off. It was never on. Mm. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, then. Goodbye, Tony. Ridiculous. I didn't know he was in submarines. But he wasn't. He was on his way to see Father Christmas. By submarine? I must say, you were decidedly unhelpful there, Jim. Was I? Encouraging him like that. But I thought he was right. It is a lovely idea. It's not an idea at all. And everyone else seems to agree. <sighs> you must accept it, Linda. You had an excellent idea, quite by accident. Now, you really ought to follow it up. So, you have to know the figures. It's a language. If you know the figures, you can make them talk. And they can say whatever you want. Ah, there you are, George. He's been with me. I thought you'd done a runner. Yeah, I've been showing him the ins and outs of the office. The business side of pigs. Oh, well, you'll be wanting some hands-on experience then. I was going to put down some fresh straw for the sows. You could lend a hand with that. Oh, you could stay in the office. In the office? Uh, George has an aptitude for the business side. He could shadow me instead, uh, if you like. Oh. Oh, I see. What do you say, George? Work with your grandfather or with me in the office. Uh, sorry, Grandad. You know how it is. Business has to come first. I don't know what you're doing here. We want to tell you something. So message me. We're going to pay Vince off. What? That's why we came, to let you know. How? How can you do that? By selling off some land. What? No! A strip up by Hollitree. Selling off Brookfield? You can't! I'm to blame. I have to find the way out. But that's not going to work, is it? It's my responsibility. No, Ben. It's ours. All of us. This is practical common sense. We do what we can. And that means we pay off Vince. It's really simple. We do it because it has to be done, and because we love you. Blame doesn't come into it, and you finish your course, because that's what you can do. This is all of us, Ben. Pip and Josh, we're all right behind you. I don't know what to say. Oh, come here. You can say you're carrying on with your course. <laughs> OK. Then, yeah, I will. Thank you. And Gran? Gran? When you say you're all behind me, does that include Gran? <laughs>